And uh, today's little banter segment was something that I was geeking out to this uh, this week when I found out that the fastest production motorcycle goes 218 miles per hour, but the, no, that's not the cool thing. I mean, two, that's fast. Two, that's, that's pretty fast, fast yeah. right? Yeah. It's that it's electric. It's you know, you know we, we like geeking out over car stuff. We've done a lot of that in the past. But I, I, when I saw this in the, in the doc, I was like, oh, cool. Let's talk about motorcycles. Yeah. It makes sense, though, right? I mean, even more than a car, that, that crazy zero mile per hour torque that you get out of an electric motor is great for a bike because yeah. you are going to be speeding up and slowing down so much. Right, right. And, uh, you know, we were talking about how, you know, hypercars or supercars now are, are hybrids. Right. For motorcycles, having like a hybrid engine isn't like quite you, the same. Heavy. It's a little too heavy. Right. I mean, uh, the, the motorcycle I'm talking about in particular is the Lightning um, LS218, Ooh. and it is pretty cool. So, well, this is not like a track bike. This is something you can actually buy. This is a production this, bike. This is a, yeah, this Ooh. is the fastest production bike that you can buy right now. And to give you like kind of a frame of mind, um, to, uh, this year, Yamaha released a 1,000cc sport bike, four cylinders, Ooh. called the R1. It makes 200 horsepower, but it makes 83 foot-pounds of torque. And that's a lot. Like, that's pretty dang fast. But the difference between this and the uh, Lightning is that the Lightning makes um, about 200 horsepower, but it also um, it makes like 165 foot-pounds of torque. Holy cow. <laughs> right? So double more than, it's basically double the torque. It's basically double but, okay, the torque. Okay, wait a minute. See, this, this is the thing I, I've never really understood about bikes. With cars, especially if you've got an all-wheel drive, you've got four wheels to put the power to the ground. With right. bikes, it's the back wheel. <laughs> it's the back there is no two-wheel drive bike, production right. bike that I know of. Right. So does that really help? Because you're just spinning in the tire at that point, aren't you? Well, that's where if you have a, a large final drive, you know, like the uh, right, big right. final drive, then that way it stops the bike from basically turning the world in the opposite direction when you get on the power. <laughs> well, because I, I could see you, like me just cranking that thing, and then it just flips over on me because there's so much torque. <laughs> you just, would think, oh. yeah, but because of the way that the final drive is and the way they've, you know, done the motor is that it, it'll slowly generate, well, not slowly, but it'll generate torque more and more and more and more as you go along. And then as you're, you know, you get up to like highway speed or something, you just, you have instant, torque on tap you just whatever you do to the throttle is what you get at the back wheel right so. now this this is interesting because we we have talked about this when we were talking about supercars where like you look at the one of the the new the mercedes hybrid supercar where the electric drive not only provides a ton of torque at the low end but it fills in the gap so when the transmission is shifting normally you'd see a, a drop in power right because right. you've got to switch to new gear well it would it would smooth that out the the torque and the power comes from the electric motor so that you don't get a big dip yeah i would think that sort of linear power band is even more important for a bike oh definitely because when you're riding you want to be smooth like when you have the bike leaned over you want to be smooth and with the absence of a clutch, with the absence of um, all the inertial, I forget what it's called, all the movement in the, with the combustion engine, right. that all that creates uh, force when you're trying to like lean the bike side to side and things like that. Without all that, it's just smooth. Like you, you can just focus on the throttle and stuff like that. All right, now, but we got Let's talk about the disadvantages here because we're talking about an, an electric bike, yes, which it's... means it's got batteries, which means it's got a limited time. It's what it goes 20 miles. <laughs> it takes two days to charge it. What are the stats here? So, I mean, things have progressed pretty quickly with the battery technology. They're still not quite there yet. You'll get, they, they claim, I mean, I, I'm more than willing to test it out myself. But <laughs> send this one before <laughs> you buy. One. Come on. Yeah. Uh, that it'll do 100 miles at 65 miles per hour. And if you have a DC fast charger, then you can charge it up in 30 minutes. But that assumes that you're carrying the DC fast charger with you when you, <laughs> right. which you won't you be, you won't be. And like, from my experience, we did the um, the BYB review on right. the Zero uh, DS, I think it was what it was called, and I think Tony didn't make it home. Oh, it couldn't no. do more than 65 miles on the freeway. And they're heavy, right? Because that's a lot of batteries. Batteries. Yes, uh, this bike weighs 495 pounds, which is for a sport bike is kind of heavy. But uh, the advantage is that with batteries, you can centralize the mass like a little bit lower right. and stuff. So, so it doesn't yeah. feel like it's that heavy. Well, the, the, that actually that's another strange thing because I remember you told me about this about the 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 zero bike, which is the centering of the mass is good, 
but it doesn't feel like any other bike you've ridden before, so no. it does take some time to get used to because you're used to the mass being up, right. and you kind of have to lean it. This is it's all the way at the bottom it's where it should bottom. be. Yeah, it's just it's lower. It lowers the center of gravity, makes the bike feel way lighter than it actually is. And the strangest thing was not having a clutch or a transmission to you. It was just the throttle and the brake. Right. And I was watching, um, it was a Zero, Zero Motorcycles uh, YouTube video where they're describing like the batteries and how like an electric engine works versus like a gas engine. And the perfect quote that I heard was that a gas engine is like a Rube Goldberg machine. Well, it really is. Machine. I mean, when <laughs> you think about it, the pistons, are, they're basically fighting each other. Right. That's how you get motion out of, uh, out of a rotary, out of, of a gas engine, an ICE. Whereas an electric motor, and we know this because we've been playing with quadcopters, you've got this sort of perfect in and it balance naturally generation it of motion. generates naturally generates yeah. torque immediately whereas like a gas engine you're feeding the gas and you're making a mixture with the air which goes to valves which is fed by a cam system <laughs> to like specially feed these pistons which then generate torque but you need to have a transmission and a clutch to kind of like you know um you know, uh, turn that into usable turn power. Turn that into yeah. usable power, uh, yeah. Uh, quadruple D in the chat room is saying, you know, walk this thing up a hill. It'll feel healthy. <laughs> yeah. yeah when, it, when it dies. Okay, That's 100 right. miles, not bad. Of course, mm -hmm. probably knock 20% off the top of that, just yeah. unless you're riding it super careful. So maybe an 80 mile range, which isn't bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could, I could just about make it from my home to the studio and yeah. back before I need to charge it up. Uh, you know, what I'd like to see is, if we start getting these charging stations for electric vehicles, so specifically mm -hmm. electric cars, if they will then be useful on electric bikes. On Ele bikes, like a universal kind of charging system. Yeah, yeah I mean, that seems we'll to see. be the, the right direction to go. And that, you know, battery technology, if if the amount of money and, and focus was going into battery technology as it's going into like MotoGP racing, right. I have a feeling that electric bikes would way beyond surpass like any gas technology that's happening right now. I think what we can say safely both for bike and car is there's going to be a lot of naysayers until you start to see these in competition and they start burning out their, their, their competition. <laughs> and I have to say I was kind of in that camp when yeah. until I rode one because I was like well you know I yeah. like I've spent it's a toy. I spent a lot of time mastering how to shift. I I like I like the noise, which is kind of childish. It's like oh, it, you know, it sounds, it sounds blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but then you Thank ride you, one. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like Jeremy. And then you ride one, and you're like, this is amazing. I have instant power. It's clean. You know, it does. It's just if. It, it's nice, and it makes, oh, it's just so much fun to ride. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, coming soon to Twit TV, we're going to have <laughs> yeah, an all-electric motorcycle gang. Uh, Papa Laporte will be up front. What should um, our, I'll be, our, uh, I'll be Little Bear. Should we have a nickname for that? Uh, we'll, we'll have to come up with Actually, we'll <laughs> probably let the chat room come up with a nickname for our, our biker gang.